Hi, I'm Stephen Hamm from Archery Supplies. Today we're going to look at the Obsession Evolution XS. Now this bow is 31 inches axle axle, IBO speed of 338, draw length adjustable from 24 to 30 inches, brace height of 6 inches if I didn't already mention that, and it says it weighs 4.4. Now it feels a little bit heavier than that, I didn't check that before I did this review. Bad on me. Now the way the draw length is adjusted is through modules here which are rotatable. So basically to increase the draw length you increase the size of the module. So here by moving it to number one, which is on the back here, that's your maximum 30 inch draw length. Um, you need torque screws to do that just there and here you have a limb stop. So you need to adjust this also to adjust your um, draw length. So what you're going to get, and you've got one up the top as well. Now this is a hybrid cam system. So it means basically up the top you've got a yoke and down the bottom you don't have a yoke. So top and bottom wheels are different. Now with this system here, you've got a locking screw here, one there. Basically just each letter is half an inch or each number is half an inch and you just adjust it. With the limb stops, you can adjust the let off. So if you want to have less let off, you just have this hit sooner in the valley. So the valley comes in, you know, hits your 90% let off. If you want less let off, just have these hit sooner so you get less let off. It's a very simple system. Now with the Obsession, you get your normal Gordon Glass limbs. This is used by every bow company. They're, they're robust. I don't think I've ever had a, um, a warranty claim on, on an Obsession bow. Um, machine limb pockets, they're all good. Machine riser. The strings are pretty good. But what I'm going to note here is I would have liked the serving here to be up higher because I don't think there's enough serving here. I'd kind of like the serving up here. So if you get slip, so this is trying to pull upwards when you draw it back, you're likely to get slip up here. And what I also noticed, I haven't shot this bow yet, but I was fitting the D-loop. I probably would have liked, you can see how much movement I'm getting on this knock. Um, just there, side to side. I probably would have liked this serving to be a little bit thicker. So I don't know how many strands of Obsession have used in their strings, but maybe the size up in the center serving I would have preferred. Now the bow comes with a roller slide here. The cables are not served. I probably prefer them to be served. String stop down the bottom. Um, with Obsession, you've got lots of color choices. This bow in America retails for $1,000, around $1,400 in Australia. Um, I really like the Obsession limb dampeners. Um, they just seem to me to be one of the best on the market. Two um, Allen key screws for your arrow rest, if you like that sort of thing. The dampener here to stop this cable slide moving forward. Um, it's got it's got the ability for a two-piece quiver there and down here, which is nice. Except Obsession don't make a two-piece quiver, so you've got to go for an aftermarket quiver. Obsession do make a quiver; it's a one-piece quiver, and they do make a stabilizer. So um, it comes with a little tag here. I'm hoping you can read um, 29 this is a 60 it's obviously made for me at archery supplies it's got a no dry fire warranty so if you dry fire this bow it's not covered by warranty that's pretty standard by most um, of the industry or all of the industry but some manufacturers will kind of help you out in a dry fire so I had one guy this week dry fire his bow twice um, twice in the week and basically all we had to fix up was the, was the strings so we had to reserve the strings on the bow i mean just don't shoot the bow with our narrow um and i mean dry fires are the most common warranty not covered by warranty it's the most common warranty i get in my shop it accounts for probably 90 percent of all warranty claims i get are dry fires so this week i had a guy went to the toilet his mate dry fired the bow shooting at his other mate then the other mate got the bow dry fired it twice aiming at his other mate and the cam disintegrated and went through his mate's leg so just this is why the guy's on the toilet anyway i don't know why i have to share that story but i think it's i think it's you know obsessions got it there in dark don't dry fire the bow 
Some people dry fire the bows by mistake, they forget to load the arrow. Sometimes the arrow falls out of the bow when you're shooting. Um, as I said, dry fires are the most common warranty. I don't know how, how obsession will be if you dry fire the bow and you need to make a claim. So, but it's stated there. I would prefer Obsession to have more of a data card on the bow because to me this really tells the consumer and the seller of the bow, i.e. the retailer of the bow, nothing. Now if you're a retailer of this bow, you're, you're standing in your shop, I have like 16 employees, I have maybe eight brands of bow and then like Obsession have about eight, eight bows in their lineup, maybe more. The chances of one of my staff knowing about this bow is so remote that it's not practical. So I think that the manufacturer should put a card on the bow telling all the stuff about the bow, the specs, the weight, the speeds, what colors it comes in, a little price tag, draw length adjustment, it should all be here so the seller and the consumer can read it. So you don't have to jump on the internet and look it up because you get you get customers who come in the store and go, look, I need a 30 inch bow, what bows have you got? Well, this is a 30 inch bow, but it won't go to 30 and a half. It's really important stuff to know. Um, so some things which are a bit unique, these little bushings here, I don't know if you like them, I got mixed reviews from my staff about them. Some of my staff said they look cheap. I didn't mind them because threading, cross threading stabilizer, stabilizer threads are common. So it happens all the time. And to me, these would be made out of steel, so they'd be solid, less likely to do it. The, this thread on the front here, obviously you just use a spanner to take it out when you cross thread it. Now, have I ever cross-threaded a stabilizer? No, I haven't, but I probably get one or two a week um, in the store that you've got to fix for people. The stabilizer, the bow limb, bow limbs into the riser here, I obviously prefer a ball that it goes into. Um, it would make it easy to adjust, and if you are likely to strip this out, then you've got that little thing to replace rather than the, replacing the whole riser. Um, I like the design of the riser. It goes in, it goes out here and then in there and it goes goes in, goes out in the kind of design and this side here is opposite to that. So this one's out, this one's in. So it's sort of repeating. It kind of feels, it looks kind of cool. Now this is obviously a reflex riser so it's pulled back here. The balance is good see my hands open it just sits there now this grip is very rounded here I don't know if it's going to hurt it reminds me of the okay bow made in Germany how round it is most bows are kind of squared off obsession to a rounded grip so that's just going to be up to you whether you like the feel of it now I'm going to say these little plates here one of them was off when I got the bow that's stuck on with 3M tape. I don't know if Obsession is using 3M tape. Most companies use 3M tape. Um, I'm going to say they're very... I'm just going to go here. You can kind of... It's kind of like it's stuck on with... Um, what's my nephew's favourite... Favourite glue um, slime. It kind of like they've been glued on with slime. So... So overall, I think the bow looks good. I don't know what it's going to be like. I think it's going to be kind of a smooth draw, but let's get into it and see how it draws. Two Allen keys to, to screw the uh, string stop on, which is good. Adjustable here, so you can change the gap. I really like. Overall, it looks kind of good. Now, 338, um, which is 327 grain arrow. It's a gold tip velocity 400 with a 90 grain point. Should be pushing towards the 300s, I think. Um, high 290s. So let's just try. So it starts off getting quite built up here, dropping off. Whoa.
296 it's a very unique draw cycle if you if you didn't get that from me drawing that back it kind of starts off easy builds up then gets easier hits the valley and the valley's kind of short the draw length feels short for me um it doesn't feel like 29 um bearings in the wheels here oh a customer this week asked should the string be in the middle of the limbs you can see here on the obsession it's clearly not in the middle of the, of the limbs it depends on the bow manufacturer some some it is and some it isn't now generally it's not generally the string is not in the middle and the reason for that is because on the other side of the string here it's tracking also so it needs to be balanced so this this can needs to be balanced in the in on the limb so so it doesn't lean over to the side so more often or not it's it's pulled to this side here it's very rare for it to be on that side some bows do track in the middle but most bows it's on this side here and they'll line it up with the yokes um, some manufacturers use different weight limbs so 296 let's just try that draw cycle <laughs> let's just try that draw cycle again See how bent my arm is. Now I felt better that time, 295, because the first time you draw back your bow, you don't know what it's going to feel like. So that time it felt better. It felt it felt soft. It doesn't. The bow looks like a speed bow, and when you shoot the bow, there's no vibration at all in the bow. Now this is a Victory 3D HV. These things are fast. I think they're about 20 feet per second faster than the gold tip fast arrow. So that was the gold tip velocity, which is the gold tip speed arrow. This is the victory speed arrow, and this will be 20, 20 feet per second faster. 400 spined arrow with an 80 grain point. Um, these things are just ballistic. Three seventeen. As I said, twenty feet per second faster. If you're shooting three D archery, get yourself some uh, Victory three D HVs. Now these are my target arrows. These are um, Victory VAPs. I've got them in the sports. I've got them in the elite, which obviously I shoot. Um, I shoot them all together. I, it makes no difference to me. And I tell you what makes no difference to me. I don't. Yes, I've got two veins on that arrow. See, I've got different knocks here. Now these are both bony knocks, and one's a smooth release, and one's another one. I'm not sure the difference. Now I was shooting a, a, an event the other day um, as a ranking event, and I was shooting at 50 meters. And I shot both types of knocks and they both went in the exact center. And hopefully I can pull up a video of a photo of that thing. But the knock made no difference at all at 50 meters. So I get a lot of customers who kind of worry about this, worry about that. I worry more about my shooting. Um, and maybe I should worry about the knocks. But I worry more about my shooting. Because it's more likely that I'm going to make a... I'm going to do something wrong or something different. Two seventy-three. Now it's a um, victory three fifty uh, with one hundred and forty grain point in it. So that's my target arrow. Um, Two seventy-three. Now this bow at sixty pounds. I feel no nothing in my shoulders it feels too short so i'm going to guess it feels like maybe 28 and a quarter um feels more stable at six inch brace height distance from there to there than i would have guessed in fact i looked at this bow and i saw the hoyt clash which is the worst bow i have ever tested um I expected this to be the same. I was expecting this bow to be hard to aim. I was expecting it to be hard to draw 
and obviously you probably saw that in my first draw cycle. I was like, oh, what's it gonna be like? And then after that, it's like all smooth, easy. So, with that, let's go back to 18 and see how well I shoot. Now, it's a bit windy today. It's very variable today. Some, one minute's blowing a gale, the next minute, nothing. So, let's see how we go. We're back at 18 meters. Um, we're gonna try the excess. Um, now, I have sighted the bow in, and I did hit the center once. Uh, <laughs> I feel fairly confident. Now, the bow shoots well. Um, it feels like a 55 pound bow to draw. So with that I went inside and checked them on both scales and it actually weighed 60 pounds but it feels like a 55. Um, when you physically shoot the shot it probably feels more like a 50 pound bow because the bow is very soft. It doesn't feel fast, it doesn't, there's no vibration, it just feels a bit, feels like a slow bow. Um, looks like a fast bow, shoots like a slow bow. The speed's actually pretty, like, I'm not too unhappy with the speed. I think that was very acceptable. Um, now the draw length feels like probably 28 and a quarter. I don't know if that's due to the small brace height or the axle axle size, but for me, this bow's at 29. I would shoot it at pro probably 29 and a half at least. And I don't shoot any bow at 29 and a half. Most bows I either shoot at 28 and a half or 29. 29 is generally long for me. This is set at 29 and it feels extremely short. You can see me bending my front arm. Now a bit about Obsession. Obsession um, is manufactured in the US, in a small country town. I'm gonna say Alabama. God, I hope that's right. Um, it's a small country town and it was just purchased by Martin Archery. Now Martin Archery have been sold again. Um, and I don't know who to this time, but apparently the new owner of Martin Archery is a friend of the guy who owned Obsession and he agreed to sell it. Now he's actually moving all the Martin manufacturing, not including the traditional bows, um, the compounds, to the Obsession factory. So Obsession will be making bows for Obsession and Martin Archery. So we'll stay tuned to see what they look like. But I've already seen changes, uh, which we'll show you in the later videos um, of their cams. Their paint's different, um, different good, different bad, that's up to you to decide, um, but different. Um, in the past, Obsession um, did a spray paint, which was very impressive, very shiny, very sparkly. That's no longer the case, it's now a powder coat. Um, they had different cam colors that you can still select on their website, but it doesn't seem to be happening when you order the bows so you order a bow with like say red cams and red riser and that doesn't seem to be happening for me uh, so i don't know if it will happen or whether it was just me like i was invoiced for a red bow with red cams but i got a red bow with black cams so i don't know if it was just me or they're not making the red cams anymore so but i did get a bow with red cams so <laughs> i don't know but anyway um Let's shoot some arrows and see how well this sort of shoots, or how well I shoot with it. Now, first off, I'm, I said at the start of this video about the different knocks, about them shooting the middle. And I focus on myself. So what I'm focusing, focusing on is this elbow. I'm focusing on this elbow being lined up with the arrow, the, my arm being lined up with the arrow, and the height of this arm. So often you'll probably see me, I drop my arm down here. I'm trying to have it up a little bit higher to create more sort of back tension and to line up things so that's one that's what i've been working on for the last week and i haven't been shooting much last week because i've been working on the new shop and it's been christmas so let's see how we go Now what I find interesting, with the short brace height, I generally get a fair bit of this wobble. I'm not getting that. And it's really weird for me, because these limbs are so far forward of the hand grip, I'd be expecting to get a lot of this. And I don't, I'm not seeing it in the sight picture. I'm not seeing the, the shake I would normally see. So that's a bit weird.
In fact, it seems to be aiming particularly well. I don't know if I'm shooting <laughs> particularly well, but it seems to be aiming particularly well. Um, the grip, I said I was rounded. I'm not feeling any pressure point like I did when I shot the OK. It feels natural. I don't know if I prefer the flatter grips of like the PSEs and many of the other bows like the Elites, but it's it's not bad. Did that just shoot to the left? <laughs> I'm, I'm at full draw, I'm thinking this bow feels solid. Like when you draw it back, it's completely solid. That's because these are touching the limbs and you're getting that solid draw. Now this is very much like an elite where the, um, the cams are locking into the rise, lock, locking into the limbs, which is very much like a Bowtech where the cams are locking into the limbs like the old Bowtex, and you're going to say, why is that? It's because it's designed by the same engineer. Um, who designed a few, a few bows, so, but that's why the bows are very, very similar. Like it feels really nice. Now in the physical weight, so the specs on this bow was 4.4. I weighed it with the sight and the arrow rest because I felt like it was heavier than 4.4 and it weighed almost 5.1 pounds on the bow scale. Pulling it like that with the sight and with, this, with the rest. So I'm guessing it's slightly over 4.4, but it feels nice to shoot. The shot comes off really nice. It's, it's nice. Nice to shoot. So when you're looking at buying a bow, you're going to say, well, which bow do I prefer at the $1,400 price point? And the $1,400 price point, that's Australian dollars or the $1,000 American price point. First thing you gotta say is what type of bow do I want? Am I looking for a 3D bow? Am I looking for a hunting bow? This is clearly aimed at the hunter. The 31 inches axle axle. Um, it's well balanced. Um, dependable. So you're going to be up against the top line bows from most manufacturers at this price point. The Elite um, is going to be more expensive, the Elite Cure is more expensive, but it's got a different limb system where you can pivot the limbs um, to affect the tune. With the Obsession you just twist the yokes. Um, extra 200 and something dollars for the Elite. Um, up against the PSE NXT now check the price in America because it could be I get cheaper pricing um, they sell for about the same price as this bow um, the NXT is a very impressive bow from PSE the NXT 31 very impressive bow draw cycles are very similar and I'd have to try them one to one this bow feels lighter the grips narrower um, very different design the PC is very far forward here so um, this has your big long limbs the PC has got shorter limbs the Hoyt top lane Hoyt like I think it's called the Ac Axis I'm gonna get that wrong Axis or something that starts with A that's more expensive than this um, it's gonna be around $1,700 mark I think I didn't mind that bow when I shot it. Um, I'm going to say it's very similar. The cams are very similar. Um, I'm going to say it's very similar. This, the obsession is very similar to that bow.
fact, I think that's the one that is the most similar to. <laughs> because it's got the same cam system, the hybrid cam system. Um, where PSE and a leader now using twin cams. I'm thinking about the <laughs> I'm thinking about the other boat companies. Matthews, I don't know, what do you Matthews are kind of I feel like Matthews is producing these shorter, shorter bows and I'm when a bow becomes under 31 inches, it generally becomes hard to shoot. And I'm like, I kind of lose interest, but maybe it's a thing in America. Um, I know I went to the Vegas shoot, and I'm shooting next door. I'm shooting next to a guy shooting a triax, a Matthews triax, which is 28 inches axle axle. And I didn't shoot that boat very well at all in my review. And Matthews probably hates me for it. Um, I didn't shoot that boat very well. I thought it was too short, and this guy, I'm like, oh, you know, he's got a hunting sight set up, a release zone. I'm going, what score did you shoot for uh, Vegas? 295. Like, 295 with a hunting bow and a hunting sight. I'm like, what would you shoot with a target bow? Like, he shot so well with it. And this is part of the thing, you're going to shoot well with any bow you feel comfortable with. I just didn't shoot very well with that bow. I can remember I said to him, I said, what score do you shoot with a target bow? And he goes, I don't know, I've never shot one. Now, if he was a customer in my shop, I'd be like, have a target bow and see what bow score you shoot. I'm sure he'd shoot 300 every day of the week with a, with a target bow. But I think he just, I think he used the Triax for hunting and Vegas was just a bit of practice for him. Look, I think that group down there is terrible from what I can see of it. And I can't blame the wind because there's no wind at the moment. Let's just shoot one more. <laughs> it looks horrible, it looks like a left to right. Looks all left to right. Let's go down there and check out the group. I'm up here at the target. Clearly not one of my best, uh, clearly not one of my best groups. Uh, hmm. Yeah, my sights are clearly low, but what you're seeing here is a bit of a spread. Um, again, spread left to right, um, and a bit of spread up and down. Now, I wasn't seeing, in my sight picture, I wasn't seeing this wobble. I didn't see that. The grip felt comfortable, so it wasn't through the grip. Um, I'm going to say the bow felt too short for me. Um, if the bow is too short, you can get a little bit of the left to right movement. Generally, when I do reviews, based on all the bows I shoot, I generally find I shoot more consistent with a 7-inch bow sight. I don't know how I shoot with 8-inch. <laughs> because the bows are generally between six and seven. I generally find my results are better with a slightly longer bow, like the 33 inch um, bow. Um, although I have shot very good grips with a 31 inch bow. Um, I generally shoot better when the bow is well balanced. This bow is clearly well balanced. Um, there's no sort of shock to, there's no shock to the shot. Um, the draw cycle's smooth. It's, it feels like an easy bow to shoot. Now this group here, look it's, if I move my sights a little bit to the right and a little bit low, look most of them would be in the gold, maybe I'm fussy, um, like I have no peep sight, I've just got a basic um, sight, but I was expecting to be better than that. Um, am I disappointed? I kind of probably look a bit disappointed, I am disappointed in that group because I really don't have any arrows that are clump clumping up together and you know normally you get one or two outliers and that's you shooting um, because you know one shot you haven't done something right like this elbows lift this shoulders lifted or this is in the wrong spot or you just fired where it's in the wrong spot or there's a bit of wind and so sometimes you get a bit of movement in the shots 
Um, but that I'm a little bit disappointed with the group. And I don't feel like it's the bow. I feel like this bow's easy to shoot. But I think with the, the six inch brace side versus the seven inch brace side, I feel like, I feel like I want the seven inch brace side. <laughs> and this is the thing when you're choosing a bow, you've got to go brace height, six or seven. Seven inches is going to be slower. It's going to be an easy draw cycle because you've got one inch less draw cycle. Um, but you're going to give up some speed. So with this bow, it's a very smooth draw cycle. Um, six inch brace height. Look, it's a, it's a nice bow. I just want it to be, I just want to shoot better. Maybe I would with time. But the other obsession bows um, would be more, would be more of the bow I would look at as far as the bow because I'm looking for more accuracy I like my arrows crunching each other I like my arrow, I like blowing off knocks um, so it depends what type of bow if you're looking for like this bow is well balanced it's a obviously a nice hunting bow it's not too heavy the grips nice um, it's got a serial number there if that means anything to you um, oh, America's best strings it's interesting they're not making their own strings I you know some companies and do you know what's even more interesting it's like so Martin and Obsession are the same company now Martin are using gas bow strings and Obsession is using America's best makes no sense to me and going back in time back 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 when Martin was um, <laughs> wherever they are were um, and you think I'd know that right uh, like this mental blank um, starts with W right Walla Walla um, they used to make their own strings and they used to make pretty good strings and they had this idea of outsourcing strings so they would outsource them all to people I just think it's interesting they use America's Best their other company is using gas um, I'm kind of interested why they don't have their own string manufacturing area um, but like these, the bow is solid. There's some things about it I'd like to be improved. I think for me, for one, I think for me being a shop seller, you want to improve the profile of the obsession and people shooting this bow. I don't really know a lot about people shooting this bow, how I was going to shoot before doing this review. Um, but it's like I said, it's very smooth, well balanced, nice shooting bow. I would want a bigger brace height. Um, and there's other bows in the obsession line I would probably prefer over this one. But for a hunting bow, if you're into hunting and walking around the bush, you're shooting shorter distances, like all those shots are going to be kill shots, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so the key points for me from this video, um, that the excess uh, feels short to draw so if your draw length whatever your draw length is add about half an inch to it if you're thinking about buying this bow um, the draw cycle is very smooth so for me I normally shoot 60 pound bows if I was going to buy this bow I'd buy a 70 pound bow because it's um, easier now saying that I I would prefer a bolt in here and I'd like to see how many how much threads left I think you could run a longer thread in here so you can wind this bow out further because um, you can see I've got space there because um, the more poundage adjustment the better in my view um, but overall I think it's good I would like more obsession, obsession accessories two piece quiver um, but sort of see what you think but overall obsession for me has been a very dependable company I haven't had any problems with them um, say problems I've had supply problems because the guy who was handling my account disappeared um, or I left the company and then there's no one handling the account and the obsession went quiet for a few months where you couldn't contact them but now it's all under the same umbrella and I've got a new sales rep so hopefully things will be rolling and I know they're producing lots of bows and I know Martin's down there getting produced now and 
they're pumping out TV series and stuff with Martin Bowes. So we'll see how 2021 is for Obsession and for Martin Archery. I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. That's the Obsession XS. Try to try it out at your local archery shop and see what you think. Um, these little things here on the limbs are to strengthen the limb if you dry fire the bow. And bear in mind, the Obsession doesn't do dry fires and most companies don't do dry fires. Um, I don't know if Hoyt do dry fires because Hoyt have that dry fire test where they dry fire the bow so many times. Um, so you'd have to check whether Hoyt do dry fire warranties. I suspect they don't, even though they've got that dry fire test. But um, overall, nice bow to shoot. Um, and I think it's compatible to, comparable to the other $1,400 bows on the market. Um, as far as the way it looks, the way it shoots, the draw cycle, the balance is, is it's perfect. Um, so yeah, I think it's comparable both to the other bows on the industry. I just think for myself, I want the 33 or a 34 or a 35 inch bow. Um, but that depends on the weight, so let's do some more reviews of the new Obsession products that have just come in and sort of see see how they go but drop a note if you've shot one of these or what you think of the bow below um, I always find it interesting when my staff have different views of a product they were sitting there in, in the shop the other day all discussing one product they were shooting and testing and I was like, I should do a video of all of you discussing products. I don't know if they'd want to be on the camera though. But um, anyway, I'm Stephen Han. Enjoy Christmas and all the best for 2021. Thanks for watching. Bye.